Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga and you can find me on Ravelry as Knitting Tradition and on Instagram as Knitting Traditions. I am coming to you from the west coast of Norway where it's really cold, <laughs> hence the fireplace going, no flowers on it since it's getting warm and uh, me wearing a little bit of extra wool. I just got home from work and um, it's around minus 13 Celsius right now, which is pretty cold for the West Coast because we have the, the Gulf Stream in the Atlantic Ocean coming in. So it's usually warmer on the West Coast. I think the coldest we've had is minus 20 in the last few years. So minus 13 is pretty cold. Um, it's usually around zero. Um, in the winter here so there is snow outside and it's lighter because the sun reflects and it's just it helps with the mood and I've been getting a little bit of knitting done so I wanted to show you that today and um, maybe we can start out with what I'm wearing so um, I usually don't wear this matching colors because it washes out a little bit but these are both called uh, Oslo which is the capital of Norway um, it's the Os Oslo hat by Petite Knit and the Oslo sweater by Petite Knit and these are both knit with two strands of yarn the Oslo hat is made with one strand of Arvetta uh, by Phil Colana and one strand of Tilia, which is their silk mohair. And I made the junior size for my smaller head. And I also made the top part a lot shorter to make it fit more like a, um, like a bowler hat style, but it doesn't actually cover my ears. So not the best if it's windy outside, but if it's not windy, it's really nice and warm. And um, I have this technique where I sew in. A, this is a triple folded kind of. It's like three layers here. This is double and then this one. And I like to sew in when I'm done here. It's not in the pattern, but I like to sew in an extra line here um, not so that it comes out on the outside of course but the other two layers sew them together and that way it doesn't roll out because if not it has a tendency to roll a bit so after doing that it stays exactly the way I want the fold to stay and I have now three of this one I have this one with the mohair uh, it's called the mohair edition of the Oslo hat and then I have the other beige one um, which is two strands of Arvetta and the brown one that I showed on the last episode episode 11 so all of them have gotten a lot of wear I'm really happy about with them even though they have three different lengths I would say the best fit is the is the beige one in two strands of Arvetta because this one's a little bit too short and the brown one is a little bit too long for the shape of the head so it's starting to get a little bit warmer in here so forgive me if not putting the hat back on <laughs> and the sweater this is the Oslo sweater and it's knit with two strands of yarn and this one I don't remember on the top of my head if I used the recommended yarn I used yarn that I had in my stash um, the Sevec Tibet which is a merino yak yarn it's one of those that's blown into a chain similar to Drops Air and Camaro's Snefnug and those kinds of yarns and the silk mohair I used is the Isayer silk mohair, a Danish yarn. And it looks almost a little bit marled. 
the silk mohair um the the silk strand in the silk mohair is a black colored strand and i think that gives it an even more mauled effect than um the usual silk mohair which usually has a white silk strand in it and the Savek Tibet was quite similar in color to this, which I'll talk about later. And yeah, the silk mohair had the black silk strand with um, browny beigey uh, mohair strands. And it has a really interesting shoulder detail, which goes down here. So it has a nice construction. It looks quite... Uh, store-bought or professionally made if I may say so and she recommends you to put an elastic band in the neck which I did and I'm really happy about maybe I should have given myself one or two centimeters more but it, it, it's not like it's choking or anything but it's I can feel it but it's quite stretchy because it's elastic right so. it has a knit one pearl one rib and the same on the sleeves and I'm really happy about the sweater it's the softest sweater that I own and that includes store-bought sweaters there is nothing softer than this in my wardrobe it really is like touching the hair of a newborn baby I would say it's really really soft and warm because the mohair fiber does bring it uh, some extra warmth and I think I've only felt one thing softer and that is this yarn which I cast on last night um, I did bring quite a lot of stash yarn with me when I moved here in September because I started working as a general practitioner kind of residency thing for six months which is something we have to do before starting our um, our specialization, kind of. So I did bring a lot of yarn with me and I had 14 skeins of this in this color and also some green ones. And this is the kind of chained yarn. And this yarn is called Hexa by Dustura Alpaca. Um, and it's really soft. I've knitted a sweater before in this. It's 100% alpaca, which is really nice. And um, I got this yarn. In Norway, we have these online yarn stores that sell a lot of commercial yarns as well. But they have some designers that design for them different, different pattern sweaters, and then they sell kits with yarn. And they uh, have test knitters to uh, knit up those patterns before they put them for sale. Because often those designers, they don't knit up a sample. They just write a pattern and then the testers test it. So I used to be a tester for them. Um, and then you could either get paid a smaller sum uh, because of taxes and everything. Or you could get a gift card to their store. So for me who love trying new yarns this was great because i got to try yarns testing for them i don't think i ever would have tested this if not and then i made the this i'll try and put a photo here i made this sweater for them it was a test knit and i really loved knitting with the yarn because it was so soft i do think with where it will pill but um that's not a big problem so uh, I decided to get the gift card and I treated myself to this yarn in this color and in green. And I was originally thinking of making um, a blanket, but I do also have some other stash yarn that I could use to make a blanket. So last night wanting to cast on something new, I decided to cast on the Augustine's number 11, this lovely dress here that I've been looking at. It keeps popping up on my uh, knitting Instagram and it just looks like a really, really beautiful dress. And um, it uses this kind of a yarn that has, not this one, but a similar style. 
together with a silk mohair and it's 10 stitches per 10 centimeters. But I wanted to use what I had in stash, so I had 14 skeins of this, and this is 100 meters per. So I figured since it's thicker, maybe it could get by by just using one strand, but my swatch was too thin. So I decided to knit it double, and then it's knit on 10 millimeter needles, so I'm really liking the fabric. I can pick it up. It's gonna be a really nice and chunky dress. Like really chunky, but so soft and squishy. <laughs> but I am expecting that I will run out of yarn before I get it to be as long as I would like to because I have 14 14 balls of this hexa yarn and in the pattern for my size I would need seven or eight uh, balls of 125 meters and I have 14 of 100 so if I held them double I have seven of 100 and not seven of 125 meters so not enough yardage but I was thinking I will just see how it goes I think my gauge is also a little bit off but it's a very stretchy um, yarn so and also for my experience um, alpaca fibers tends to grow when you wash it and it gets a lot more droopy and heavy that's my experience from some other garments that I have in it that they grew in length over time so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna knit the body and the sleeves and then I'll see how much I have left for the skirt part. And then you're also supposed to do pick up an eye cord on the neck and on the bottom of the sleeves after, well, when you're done. So I was thinking if I don't have enough yarn in this color, I could A, get some more or B, knit the skirt in the green color and then have the green eye cord on the neck and the sleeves to kind of tie it all in so i'm kind of just going to see how i like it as i go to kind of get a vision of how i want it to be um so far i cast this on last night for like two hours or so three hours maybe of knitting um and I'm really liking how it looks. I'm excited to see how the size will be because right now I'm doing increases on a sleeve. So I think I think it's fine. Mm. But we shall see how it goes. But I think it's going to be a really warm dress, really nice for winter, like temperatures like this. Could wear this with um, some stockings and it will be really nice. And I'm using my Licka Needles. Never thought I would get to use these large sizes, but hey, just gotta find the right project. So, I'm really excited to have another dress and hopefully it will fit well. And if not, I could either gift it or I could unravel it and use the yarn for something else. I think it's gonna be a really quick knit, so it's not a big, not a big problem. And yeah, so that with that amount of knitting that I did, I'm still on like the first first one skein, but I ha I hold them double, so my first two. So we'll see. I think it's it got me pretty far, so I'll keep you posted. And then I actually finished this pair of socks so i wanted to podcast today so that i can start wearing them these are some socks that i use the moors hell pattern that i am working on um, i've got a few test knitters who have casted it on and started um, if you like test knitting and you're a quick sock knitter um, you could always message me on ravelry 
I don't think I will get 50 test knitters or something, but if you were one of the first, then um, uh, I will send you the pattern to test if you're interested. And if I already have enough testers, then I'm sorry. <laughs> no, um, don't mean to be mean and tell people no, thank you, but uh, yeah. I hope to get that out. Um, it's the same pattern that I used for this, except um, this one I use contrasting colors for the cuff, heel and toes. And in this one, I just use one color. And I had this idea for the longest time, oops, sorry, that I wanted to try and substitute nylon with silk mohair. Um, just so that I can use more woolen yarns um, that are not super wash and that don't have nylon uh, but you still need some strength so that it doesn't wear holes too quickly so the idea of this is I've knitted this up with one strand of merino uh, non super wash 100% merino held together with a silk mohair strand and the merino is a yarn from Sunnes Garn that they produce together with Petite Knit. It's called Sunday, which is the yarn she uses in her Sunday patterns. Uh, she has like a t-shirt in it at least. And the silk mohair is called Thin Tin, Thin Silk Mohair by Sunnes Garn as well. So they were pretty much the same color and I cast it on 64 stitches and then I saw already that it would be um, too big if I knit 64 stitches after the cuff so I decreased on the first round to 60 and then I did the heel the way my grandmother taught me and then decreased it further down to 54 stitches and um, did a Kitchener stitch toe and it became quite a yarn chicken game at the end there. Um, I had no idea how much I needed. I only got one ball of the silk mohair and one ball of the Sunday yarn. And it was enough, <laughs> barely. So this is how much I have left of the silk mohair. And this is how much I had left of the Sunnis yarn, uh, Sunday yarn. Uh, I did actually have some more of this because my friend um, used this for a knitted um, suit for her baby and she had half a skein left over and I told her that I had been looking at this color and this skein to do this project so she kindly gifted me her her leftover so that um, I had some in case I needed extra but it worked out nicely uh, with the with the it's not a super long leg and it also I have smaller feet but for this size it worked out really well and I really like not having a lot of leftovers so this one I could use either as an effect on some other project or I can always just add it to my um, UFO of two granny stripe blankets uh, so maybe I'll just add it to there and I'm doing kind of like a magic knot thing and just using up all the scraps. So that's the idea. So really happy with these and I'm going to be wearing this quite roughly. I'm going to be wearing them to work. I'm going to be wearing them in my shoes just to really put them to the test and see how they hold up. I'm a bit worried about the mohair fibers which are quite fuzzy that they will kind of uh, fell together and um, yeah, fell together, um, especially under the foot where there's a lot of friction. Um, but I, I, that wouldn't bother me too much. What would bother me, however, is if I get holes in them, because I'm not. I don't know how to mend socks. I'll learn. I'll teach myself one day. But so far, I haven't gotten any holes in any of my knitted socks. Uh, I have some really old ones that I got from my grandmother. She used to knit socks for all of us grandchildren for Christmas. We would get like one or two pairs and she, there's 13 of us on her side of the family. So she knit a lot of socks and none of them have gotten holes in them. And I do wear them in my shoes and to work 
and inside all year around. So good quality in those socks, a lot of love. And I cast on another project, another sock project. Um, I got this yarn a few episodes ago and see I spilled coffee on it. I tried to wash it because uh, I had coffee with milk and it will smell if you don't get it out. But um, I will just knit it up and then wash it and it will be no problem. But this yarn, uh, kind of going off track here, this yarn is the um, Hillesvog Fjord Sockegarn. Let's see if I'm mistaken. No, this is right. It's the Hillesvog Fjord Sockegarn which is the yarn that I got from a knitting festival this fall. The one and only of this year before Corona came back and closed everything down. And this is the yarn that I had in the giveaway, uh, the 5000 giveaway, um, where the winner got the yellow yarn and I got to keep the gray one, which is fine by me because I have some gray um, rug socker we call it. It's just a knit pearl kind of sock uh, that most Norwegian people own, I think. Very, very common and you can buy them in stores, machine knit. But I really wanted to make a hand knitted version of this. So what I'm gonna do is that I will try and apply this to the pattern that I've made with the way my grandma made the heel so I will I have I'm doing knit for pearl four because I like those big chunky stripes and I will use those also on the heel flap and then underneath the foot it will just be plain stockinette and that way I can also decrease in the gusset and the stockinette part until it's a little bit more snug because my foot size is slimmer than my leg size so this is quite stretchy i like to use the norwegian uh, cast on which is quite similar to the long tail cast on but it has a little bit more finically flicks some extra moves there um, but it's quite nice and stretchy it looks like knit stitches when you make it so I am knitting these on 2.75 millimeter needles and I think the yarn is made for thicker needles. Um, let's see, yeah, it's made for uh, 2.5 to 3. So yeah, I guess I'm perfectly on point with my 275s. Um, Let's see, put this back in so I don't forget it. So I'm using 275 and I cast on 56 stitches because it is thicker than a fingering weight yarn. And it's giving me quite a tightly knit, in my opinion, uh, fabric. And I think it's gonna be a really nice, warm, rustic, can't have an episode without saying the word rustic <laughs> sock. So I'm keeping this in my Christmas bag from the Urban Stitcher just because I'm not ready to let go of the whole Christmas feel quite yet. And I've been knitting a lot on my cabled sweater. Uh, not during the weekend because on the weekend I was up on the mountain with my family skiing but uh, two days before they got here and after they left. So I have separated the front and back. So yeah, I've gotten pretty far on the back, if I may say so myself. Um, I'm just making this pattern up as I go. So when I thought it was long enough to fit both me and my boyfriend, I used the middle section, which is just a moss stitch, I think. I took the six center stitches and bowed them off. And then on every right right side row, I um, 
at the beginning of the row, whichever set, or just the beginning of the row, I decreased two, two, one, one, one stitches until I got to one stitch before the braid. So I'm always having this one corner stitch, which I only slip at the beginning and then I knit it the last stitch. So it makes it easy to pick up stitches later for for the sleeves. And what I think I will do is I might, once it starts to get long enough, I might do some decreases on the sides to make it more of like a this kind of shoulder shape up towards the neck instead of a straight line. Um, but I haven't gotten that far yet and I haven't figured that bit out yet, so we shall see. And then I also have to do, of course, the front piece. And when I'm knitting the front piece, I have to figure out how to do the neck. Because I'll probably want to do some uh, binding off here and decreasing to get a rounded shape. But like I said, I'm figuring this out as I go using some different braids all along and I'm loving the way it's knitting up. I'm using the Holst Super Soft in the color Cinnamon and it's a really nice yarn. Um, it's quite affordable. I was watching, um, there's two podcasters that I watch that have made garments in this, Unico Knits and the Crimson Stitchery, or the Crimson Stitch. I think she's called the Crimson Stitchery. And she's from the UK, and her name is Anushka, and I love her podcast. It's very informative, and she's very colorful. And she actually did three whole, whole episodes on Holst Super Soft Yarn, from how it's made, to how to wash it, to how to knit with it. And, um, I watched that after dividing for the front and back and she said that um, when she knit her sweater it when you wash it it um, shrinks not widthwise but lengthwise so I mean for me it's not gonna be a problem because I did make it quite long for my size just so that I would be sure that it would also fit my boyfriend so if it shrinks, then it will still fit me, no problem. Might be a bit too short for him, but as long as it fits someone, right? So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much it shrinks up. I think before I wash it, I will take some measurements to see how long it is underneath the sleeve and how long it is all the way. And then do the same after I wash it to see how much it actually shrunk up. But knowing this, I will also make sure that I make the sleeves long so that um, they will fit. But then what I am wondering about is how long to make the back and front piece for the arms. Um, I'll probably make them a bit longer as well. I wouldn't mind too much if it's like a deeper armpit as long as it's not so deep that when you put on a jacket the whole thing lifts up i'm not a fan of those um bat wings the bat wing shape oops i lost something oh well i'll clean up after i'm done recording so yeah this has been getting a lot of love i'm really enjoying knitting on it now that i see that i'm getting somewhere once I've knitted the front and back, it's just the sleeves and the neckline left. And yeah, it's going a lot faster just knitting the back, of course, than knitting in the round. Although following the, the structured knitting the braids on the wrong side of the work is a little bit tricky. I have to kind of revert every stitch in my head. It's like, no, it's not knit, it's purl and the other way around. But I've done so many repeats now that it's starting to become quite intuitive and I don't need to look at the chart all the time. I do, however, need to look at the chart to figure out when these uh, braids um, do the twist 
because I, for some reason, I just can't remember in my head which row that's supposed to happen on. But I think it's turning out quite nicely and I'm excited to see how it will be when it's washed up. And yes, I also cast on a new project since the last time. This is what I brought to the cabin to go skiing and it's gotten pretty far. See, this is where my color work <laughs> is faulty. That's the beginning of the row, but who cares? So this pretty side, <laughs> this is a Norwegian pattern by Dropla Design. She is the maker of also my favorite sweater. Um, she uses a lot of Hillesvog Tinde, which is my favorite yarn. So I think that's also one of the reasons I really love her patterns, just because everything about it appeals to me. This is, and also she's really good at at least the patterns that I've knitted from her. It uses up almost all of the yarn, which is really, really nice. So you don't have scraps or leftovers. It uses what you got. So this is Mellum Chef. It's a knit in the round, which is great for color work. And then it's charted and you put large pom-poms at the end. You sew the end together when you're done and you use your two contrasting colors, whatever you have left, to make pom-poms. And the entirety of the scarf in the main color, you just knit until you don't have anything left of it. So it uses everything. And it has three, three charts. It has this lovely section down here, then this section, and then the lice. And so it will look pretty much like this. So you have these two sections on this side and then you have the, who getting warm, the section with the lice going around your neck and then back around and down again. And then I think she uses, um, for me, the gray tussles here and the white here. Uh, I've also seen somebody doing white gray white gray that they kind of do every second color on each side i don't know what i will do yet this is the brownish gray color that i used this is the cognac color my favorite color which i use for the main color and then for the white i didn't have white in this yarn because this yarn whew, is the Norwegian Pelth wool, which is a naturally gray yarn. So they don't have white. So this is their Hillesvogs Sul, which is a lamb's wool base. And these two are quite contrasty. When I knit these up, they don't have that much of a contrast. But I did try to um, do different samples. I tried to switch the gray and white around because it's quite subtle, the color work here. But I realized that I liked it to be this subtle. When I switched them around, the white was just too in your face. It was too dominant for the look that I wanted because I wanted the cognac to be kind of the main focus. Um, and also, if I only used the gray for the lice, I think it would be almost not visible at all. And if I used the white for this, it was too visible. So I'm pretty happy with what I chose in the end and using what I had in my stash before I move. And it's gonna be so warm. This is like a DK worsted weight. It's, and when you wash it, it fluffs up so much. It blooms beautifully. It gets like a mohair halo. I've showed the sweaters in previous podcasts that I've knit with this and it's just lovely. And also, you know, when you knit it in the round, you have a double layer and also with the color work inside, that's an extra kind of layer. So it gets really warm. And when I wash it and it blooms, it will also be quite windproof and it's quite large. Um, so having this around your neck once or twice, you're not going to be cold. 
when I first started it, I was kind of, <laughs> I was trying to do color work with people around me and um, it wasn't going as far. So I was contemplating just making it into a cowl and just be done. But I'm really happy with it. And I'm, I say, I'd say I'm halfway done. I have started the second out of three. So yeah, I'm halfway done with using up my main color. And then of course, I also have to sew it together at the ends and make the tassels. And I've never made tassels before, so I'm hoping that the pattern will describe how to do it. I actually haven't read through all of the pattern yet, but there's lots of videos online, so I'll figure it out either way. And I think if you wanted to make the scarf, you could also figure it out, even though you don't speak Norwegian, because it is charted. So you just need to know how many stitches to cast on and then just follow the charts and make tassels. So really happy about this. It's nice and warm to hold in my hands when it's cold to knit on. And then it's a nice contrast to, to be able to pick up this soft one, which is so soft <laughs> after holding the two rustic um, other woolen yarns, the alpaca is really, really soft. And otherwise than that, I received a beautiful package in the post from France, uh, a maker called Julie, Julie, or in Norwegian we say Julia, but I think it's Julie in French. I hope I'm not wrong. She is a small maker. Uh, she makes gorgeous stitch markers and um, something that was new to me. Uh, row counters or how do you? Yeah, manual row counters. I've never seen those before. I, I haven't even heard about them. So apparently it seemed really easy. You can use these row counters to kind of, you put it on your needles for your rows and then you can move this one. So let's say you've done 10 rows, you can put it here and then it's plus whatever, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. Or put it here and it's 20 and then you have 21, 22, 30. So if you need to count your rows, it's great. So um, maybe I will do that when I have the next project where I need to do something for a certain amount of rows so it'll be easier for me to keep track. So I thought that was really, really nice. And she didn't only send something from me, she sent something for you guys too. So I don't have to flip them around so you see the individual stitch markers. So the, there's a combination a combination of the kind that you have on your needle, like the rounded, the round stitch marker. So there's like a, it's this candy that says one more, it's like one more round or one more candy. And there's a sock and a cloud and another one more and another cloud. So it's great if you have like, when I have pairs um, and I have, very similar ones that I've already put on my projects. I think I had it on my on my sock. Yeah. So I have like a white version of the sock on my sock. So they are stunning. And I also got one of these uh, row, what's it called, row? Yeah. So here's another one with the cute little cloud on it. So what I'm thinking is I will save this cloud and these stitch markers and progress keepers from Apollonia. I'll put the link in the description box and we will have this as one of the prices in an upcoming knit-along that I've been wanting to do, 
which is um so we're doing the rustic knit along now until the end of february so there's still time to join if you have some uh, natural fibers or plant fibers that don't contain synthetics and are non superwash um, you can join in it can also be whips and i will draw a prize from the ravelry thread finished objects at the end of february and we already have some lovely prizes for that but I was thinking um, that in 2021, I at least want to knit a bit more for my stash. Give some love to those skeins at the bottom of my box that I just haven't looked at in a while and kind of just start dreaming again about what they could be. Maybe the projects that I got them for initially is not something I want to knit anymore. So then I can give it a second thought and find something that will bring a lot of joy to knit of it. So I am thinking that even though we already have one knit along, that doesn't mean we can't have two, right? So I uh, want us to start a knit along, uh, which... Hmm, Maybe you guys can come up with some ideas for what to call it. Um, something about knitting from stash. Uh, yeah. If you have some ideas of what to call it, put it down below. And I will make a um, group on Ravelry. And we could also do like a hashtag on Instagram with it because I just love to see what people are making. And not really many rules, just um, it needs to be something from your stash that's older than 2021. Is that a good rule? Because we just started 2021, right? And uh, I, it can run for all of 2021. And I guess we can figure out as we go if we're gonna do several prices along the way, if there are more than one uh, small maker that would like to collaborate with the podcast, or if not, then I could uh, buy something and at the end of the year um, draw a price. So we'll see. Maybe more than one, maybe just one, but I'm thinking that you can participate as many times as you want, and that just increases the chances of winning if you want to win. But it's mostly about just loving the yarn that we already have and bringing it out to the light of day and letting it become what it's always meant to become. And also it's just really nice to see what people are making with what they have. It gives a lot of inspiration, uh, especially scrap projects. I love to see what people do with their scraps or uh, their advents. If they have some advents that they still haven't used up, it's just really nice to see. And um, yeah, that's all the knitting I had this time. I did uh, um, get in contact with a yarn friend from Canada. Her name is Susan or Sue. I'm not sure if he, she uses Sue or Susan the most, but uh, we are doing um, a yarn exchange so I'm gonna I'm getting her some Norwegian yarns and she's getting me some Canadian yarns, and I was thinking that um, you know the knitting community is such a nice and loving community and it's lovely how we can connect to people that we never otherwise would have connected with. Um, so I'm I'm really excited to be swapping some yarn with her. Um, I don't know if you guys would be interested in doing the same with each other. I did try to make like a swap group on Ravelry when I just started up the podcast, um, but it didn't really take off. <laughs> but if, if that's something that other people than me would be interested in, we could make a swap group on Ravelry where people can post where they're from and where they would like to try some yarn from and then Maybe you guys could connect with each other the way that I connected with Susan. I, of course, cannot uh, connect with uh, 
several people because that would be just too expensive. <laughs> but this is going to be a nice treat for 2021 to get some yarn from Canada that I never would have found otherwise. And hopefully she will like her yarn. And I was thinking that I would show you the little treasures that I got if you like to see yarn acquisitions. They're not for me, but for her. So if you're watching this, see you next episode, Susan. You're, you're supposed to not see this. It's, an, it's a surprise. That's what we agreed on. So I got her some different things. Oh, it's in a bag, so sorry about the crinkles. I got her... Oh, it's not good for the lighting. These are three skeins of silk mohair from Sunnis Garn. And it's not the thin silk mohair. These are a bit more substantial. And this is like a dark teal blue-green kind of color. And these are light blue. And together they are really lovely and the idea is that this is enough for her to make a mohair shawl if that's something she would like. I tried to look at the colors that she had on her photos and I did see a lot of blues so I'm hoping she will like this. I especially like this teal color. And if she doesn't want to make a shawl she could make whatever with this. This will go a long way. It's 280 meters per skein and it's also you could pair it with something else for a lot of different projects you could even make socks like I'm doing but I will let you know how that works out and then I got her two uh, light gray skeins in Finul which is a Norwegian yarn by Rauma and this is a Norwegian yarn by um, Sanneskarn and then I got her uh, two uh, beige colors in Fritid Skarn by Sunnes, which is 100% Norwegian wool and a brown one. So this would be perfect for the Lumi socks that I have made a lot of. But she could also weigh cats, cows, mittens, whatever. And they're also great for felting if you want to do that. But it's quite a thick yarn. So it's going to be really nice and warm. I've never been to Canada. I really do want to go one day. I think the climate is quite similar to here. Um, maybe even colder. So warm wool is nice. And I also got her a little milk chocolate. This is the um, most famous classical Norwegian milk chocolate from Freya. It's really good. So... I wanted to give that and then I'll see if I have something in my stash from Hillesvog because then I have like the three major Norwegian yarns companies. Uh, there's, It's not really um, that easy to get hand dyed yarn here. It's not that common um, because we do have very accessible, um, good quality wool yarns from these uh, Norwegian yarn mills so there there are starting to be some um, indie dyers but not that many and it's not that easy to get access to especially not where I live so I'm hoping that she will like this even though it's not a indie dyer yarn they're all really nice ones the phenol is a bit more rustic that's what I knit the cowls um, that I made because I have the Selbu cowl, the Zigzag cowl, and the Vikafjall cowl on Ravelry. And they all use this yarn. Whilst the Silk Mohair is really nice and soft, and the Fritids garn is a softer option to the Alapos Lupi. They're the same kind of yarn, um, but it's a lot softer. It's not as itchy. So if you're too sensitive to wear Alapos Lupi, that could be an option if you're able to get it where you live. And a yes, a little sit and knit with me section. Uh, as always, I'm going to put some video at the end of what I've been doing for the last week, which is cross-country skiing. 
and work but I'm not gonna put work up there because uh, patient confidentiality is a thing <laughs> but I did go skiing uh, with my parents and aunt and uncle and one of my cousins Maya and it was beautiful it was like minus 7 to minus 13 degrees really dry um, the snow was perfect it was prepped really well and one of the trips you could take with your cross-country skis was just under five kilometers and the other one was 11 or 12 so it was really nice and it wasn't that steep hills because usually when I've gone cross-country skiing to me cross-country sounds like you're going across country it's flat but in Norway no it's up and down mountains which to me should be alpine skiing but we do it with our cross-country skis and I'm afraid of falling so that's not ideal for me because with the cross-country skis to slow down the speed is not that easy because they're quite thin um, and they don't have like steel edges but this place that we were at had a lot more kind of flat um, prepped areas there wasn't a lot of up and down so I got to kind of just work on getting comfortable in on my skis and not falling and that was really nice so I really enjoyed that and then my cousin has gotten into knitting in the past two years as well so we were sitting inside and knitting together she had some Alla for Sloopy yarn that she had got while in quarantine <laughs> but she didn't have her needles so she borrowed actually these 2.75 needles to start the cuff of her sweater with the Alla for Sloopy and then she used five for the rest so it's going to be quite a dense fabric but she wanted it as an outdoor sweater and it's gonna have some braids and it's gonna be really pretty and I was knitting on my scarf and then I had a thermos in my bag from the car ride up which I forgot to take out so uh, on the Sunday when we were leaving I noticed that it was in there and it had almost exploded because of the milk because I drink coffee with milk it had soured and um, that's why I got coffee on some of my yarn but I managed to uh, take my scarf and yarn out of there and it was only two skeins that had got just a small drops of coffee on it so I cleaned it out and washed the bag and that was fine but I will be careful next time to not put coffee with milk and forget it in my knitting bag. That's not a good idea. Yeah. Oops, I made a mistake. So here I did a purl stitch in the knitted one. So I'll just drop it down and then pick it back up do some yarn surgery. Do you guys do yarn surgery? Instead of ripping back, I'm just knitting it back up. And we're all good. I hope I didn't do it for the whole round. No. And it's fixed. Uh, sometimes I feel like there's not enough time in the day to do all the things I want. But then again, all the things I want to do is knit and watch TV and in the Netflix section of this week I've been re-watching The Last Kingdom I've been wanting to do it ever since I I talked to um, Emma of the Woolly Mammoth it's another wonderful lovely podcast who also includes beautiful scenery at the beginning and end uh, she, she, we were talking about um, The Last Kingdom a few weeks ago and ever since I've been wanting to rewatch it so I started doing that and I'm on season 2 right now and yeah, really enjoying it. There's also a new season of Vikings out but I haven't gotten around to that yet. 
my my memory is pretty bad so i can watch something and then almost forget it i don't know if you guys do the same but that's the reason i <laughs> some of the reason i enjoy re-watching harry potter and lord of the rings is that i never managed to remember all the details so it's always nice to go back and watch it again also they're just really well made i love the feeling that those movies give me so do you guys what do you think of 2021 so far i was kind of hoping that this year is going to be way better it can't be worse right hope for a better year but i was thinking you know january we could call it a test month right see if things get better in february i'm, I'm still hopeful still hopeful still hopeful are you guys doing well? I hope you're doing well. I hope that 2021 is treating you better or that it will soon at least. There's a lot of things going on in the world right now. And until then, I'm glad we have our knitting. It does bring a lot of peace to a hectic world. And I think it's gonna be nice to do a knit from stash Kind of knit along. I feel like I need to cleanse out a bit of 2020 still. And yeah. I think that's gonna be good. And then I'm gonna be moving in less than a month. I'll be moving to Ferda, starting my new job uh, as a pediatrician, kind of in training. So I'm really excited to learn something new again. I'm always learning every day at work, but it's gonna be quite different when you change your speciality to kind of different things you see at work. And also I heard that the nurses there um, like to knit, so I hope that they will welcome me into their little uh, office to sit and knit with them when it's quiet in the ward and hopefully it's often quiet kids are healthy and we can knit that would be nice and i'm also excited to just be in a little bit of a bigger city being able to go to cafes because so far we have been able to go to cafes things haven't closed down um like I know it has in a lot of other countries. So I'm really excited to go to a cafe and get some warm beverage and sit there and knit with family and friends once that is allowed. Maybe go on some hikes. Where I'm living now, I'm surrounded by beautiful nature, so it's not that difficult to get some footage to show you at the end. Um, but when I move, that will definitely become a little bit more difficult because it's a lot more houses. Um, so I have to go a bit further to get some footage. But for you guys, I guess I will squeeze that into my schedule since a lot of you do enjoy seeing that. But maybe a few weeks, if I'm working a lot, it'll be a bit difficult. So you'll have to excuse me then. But I really enjoy seeing all the things people are making for the cows. So right now I'm putting some um, photos from Instagram at the end of the video with finished projects and whips. And I guess in the next, the rest of the year, I will put some photos from the uh, Knit From Stash Knit Along or whatever name we come up with. I'm looking for inspiration. So yeah. And I guess I managed to talk for a while today as well. <laughs> uh, strange times we're living in. I hope that you are doing well. Like I said, that um, you managed to find some peace and quiet with your knitting and that um, you're hoping for a better year together with me. And 
I shall see you soon. And hopefully then I have gotten a bit more proge progress on my four whips. And I also need to get back to some of my older whips. So we shall see how long that takes. <laughs> okay. Um, I am going to go make myself some warm cocoa and I suggest that you go and make yourself or fill up on whatever you're drinking or wish to be drinking. And I will see you in a week or so. Bye!